Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Jasmine. For those who are new, I'm a casual reseller on the US and Canadian Poshmark app as well as eBay. Today's video, I'm going to go over how to make a new reselling inventory spreadsheet. I have made one before, but I have a few more tips and tricks on how to make your spreadsheet organized and your life easier. An inventory spreadsheet is just a really good way on how to track both your inventory as well as your sales. And it's easy to do it online just because you can create these formulas that will easily calculate certain things that you want to keep track of. As always, if you like reselling content like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. So even if you don't have a Microsoft account, you just have to have a Gmail account and you have access to Google Sheets or Excel spreadsheets. You have to click the icon on the top right hand corner, which is like a grid like symbol and you go down and scroll to sheets and that will allow you to create a new Google Doc. So this is what I have um, as a template. As I mentioned, Google Sheets is a really good way of keeping track of both your inventory and your sold listings. What I like to include on my sheet is where you source the item, what the item is, so like a brief description of it, your cost of goods, the day that you bought it, and then a column for your day you listed it because that might be slightly different. And if you like to keep track of how many days it took for an item to sell, um, it's a good idea to keep a column or a data of when you actually listed the item. The item ID is just the number that is included on the price tag when you do buy something from a thrift store. There is a little um, ID code or like a, a band of numbers which basically if you have any questions about you know the cost of goods or anything like that you can refer back to your receipt and that way you have a organized way of how to keep track of your items. If let's say you went to the bins and you don't actually have an item ID then of course that would be blank and you wouldn't be able to do that but you can refer it to maybe the receipt that you had included that item in or some other sorts of way. And lastly, of course, you wanna keep track of where you're keeping that item. So I currently use a bin system. So um, mine are in alphabetical order, A, B, C, etc. So I'm just saying that I'm putting this item in bin K. So in order to organize where you're sourcing your items, if you are keeping track of how well you are sourcing from different places, if there's a certain location or area that is doing better for your sourcing. Um, an easy way so that you don't have to keep typing out the different places is to do a drop down menu. And this is really easy to do. Um, oh, and by the way, I forgot, um, if you haven't seen my previous um, video on doing the reselling spreadsheet. This is really easy to do. You just type it out. You can name your columns and everything like that. You can change, let's say, if you want it because you're OCD about certain things and you want it to be a currency value, you can click currency. If you want to change it to a percentage, you can click percentage, etc. But of course, cost of goods is in percent, um, cost of goods is in a, a dollar amount, sorry. Okay, so a quick way to select all the items if you want something to apply for the total column is just to click the top of the column, so the column name, which would be column A. You click the control button, you hold that down, and you click A. So as you can see, the entire column is highlighted. Of course, you don't want to include the title, so you can click the control button again and deselect the source or the title of that column. In order to quickly do a drop down menu, you click um, the at symbol, so shift number two, and you just type out drop down. And as you can see, it pops up, you click that. And here you can see that there are multiple options that you can include. So I'm gonna say value village as my first one. Maybe number two is Goodwill. I'm gonna add another one, bins. Another one, maybe own closet. And maybe a Salvation Army. And click done. So as you can see, 
it automatically does it for the entire column and you can click that little arrow and easily just include whatever source um, location that you got your item from. So I'm going to say this one's Goodwill. If I were to add um, ones below, you can click something else, Value Village, and then add the other items. So this is a really fast way to, you know, just so that you don't have to keep writing out the names of the stores and it makes it really easy. So this is all that I basically include in my inventory spreadsheet. I am very far behind, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, when I am more organized, this is how I like to organize what the items I am bringing in and just to keep track of everything that I have. So as, um, as I mentioned before, if you haven't seen my other spreadsheet and you don't know, um, if you click the very bottom, the plus symbol, you can easily add another sheet um, and it will be a completely blank sheet. You can change the name of the sheet by just clicking that uh, title at the bottom and then you can just type out whatever you want. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the sold spreadsheet that I'm going to create. So I just have a general uh, spreadsheet that um, just to show you what kind of things that I like to include in my spreadsheet. If you have anything that you like to include that I don't review that you need some help with uh, coding or you know creating a formula, just leave it in the comments below and I can make like a uh, YouTube shorts just to answer your question. So um, I'm gonna go over the titles of what I have on my spreadsheet. So I have the platform that it sold on, what the item was, my cost of goods, the date listed, which you can refer back to your inventory spreadsheet if you don't remember, the date sold, any shipping fees that you had to pay for if it was like on eBay or you um, offered a shipping discount on Poshmark, for example, the sold price, the earnings after any fees, how long it took to sell the item, your profit and your profit margin. So as I mentioned in the inventory spreadsheet, um, I've created a drop down menu for the platform that it has sold on. And again, you just select the entire column and you can edit how many different options that you want under the drop down menu. Next column is the item, of course, um, the cost of goods. I don't really have to review any of that. The date listed, date sold, shipping. So let's say you didn't, if I sold it on Posh US and I didn't offer a shipping discount, then that would be blank. Um, the sold price and then the earnings would be um, your sold price minus the cost are the fees of the platform. So normally you would be able to apply the same formula down the entire column, but because the platform fees would be different depending on what platform you sold on, unfortunately you can't um, just copy and paste the whole um, formula, if you know what I mean. So in order to calculate earnings, it's obviously what your sold price is minus any fees. Because I do have another column for profit, that will include any shipping discounts and your cost of goods as well. So your earnings, let's say for Posh US, would be your sold price, oops, your sold price, and then it'd be times 0 0.8 just to uh, take away the 20% fee. So as you can see, if I sold something for $100, my earnings is $80. In order to calculate days to sell, it's actually really easy because Excel knows just how many days have, have elapsed if you included the date and the year that you sold something. So um, as you can see here, the date listed, I have it February 21st, 2022, and I sold it on February 21st, 2023. I'm just gonna see if I can include Okay, I don't know why it doesn't include the year, but as you can see at the top here, it does have the year there, so we're good. And days to sell, you basically include the formula of equals again, and you take the date sold minus the date you listed it, and it automatically includes how many days have elapsed between those two dates. 
So that's really easy. I thought it was a little bit more complicated when I was talking about it in my first video, but it's actually really easy. Um, it just knows and calculates uh, the years and the dates um, that have passed. Now, an easy way to include uh, the same formula down the entire column, um, the method that I showed in my last video was if you select the column with the formula and you see that little dot in the corner, you can click that and drag it down to whatever column you want to continue it and it will automatically apply um, that same formula. But an easier way um, that I have recently discovered is select your entire column and um, okay I'm just going to delete this just so that you can see it formulate. So you select your entire column, click the control button to deselect the title and you just have to hold control and press D button. And there you can see that it will calculate it all down the entire I column. So that will save you a lot of time just so that you don't have to keep writing the same formula and it just automatically applies the same one down the column. Now on to profit. In order to calculate profit, obviously you are going to take your earnings minus shipping fee and your cost of goods. So the formula that I have here is, um, which I should change. So I'm going to do equals. I'm gonna do H2 minus uh, shipping, which is zero. So F2 minus your cost of goods minus 20. So you can see that the profit is $60. If you were to manually um, do it on paper, obviously 80 um, minus uh, your cost of goods of 20 is 60. And um, similar to the other, column. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to select the entire column, deselect the title and uh, hold down control and D at the same time. And there you can calculate the same um, formula. So again, that's really easy on how to calculate your profit. And finally, we are going to calculate your profit margin. So if you don't know how to calculate your profit margin, the formula is taking your profit minus costs of goods and then you divide it by your profit. And as you can see, this is indicated as a percentage. I'm just going to delete all that stuff and we're going to do it together. So equals again, take your profit column. Oh, because we are minusing it and uh, dividing as well, just like, you know, learning in school, your bed mass, you do have to include brackets just so that Excel knows what to calculate first. So I'm going to include a bracket, take my J2 column minus uh, my cost of goods, close your bracket and then divide by your profit and enter. So as you can see, this is in a percentage. For yours, um, if it doesn't come up as a percentage, again, you can just click the percentage number and it will change, change it. So let's say it was a dollar amount, it would change it to dollars, but of course it's a percentage. And similarly, if you want it to apply to the entire column, you can select the, um, select the title of the column. So K, control to deselect the title, and then you can control D and you can see it calculate. So because we don't have any values on the other uh, rows, it can't really calculate anything because the amounts are zero. So anything divisible by zero would be like an error. So, um, but as you fill out certain things, I'm just gonna say this was five, two, hundred, um, then it will automatically apply. So that is a very easy way to um, formulate an easy reselling spreadsheet. Um, if you want to include any other information, you are welcome to just you know, create a, another column title and create a new formula. I don't know what else you would want to include. If you have any ideas, just leave them in the comments below because these are basically all the things that I like to include in my reselling spreadsheet. And again, if you want to um, include anything else, let's say you wanted to create an analytics page, you can easily just create another tab. 
You can name it analytics. And you can also refer to uh, data from previous spreadsheets. So let's say you wanted to calculate your average um, sales prices from the month of February 2023. You, um, again, uh, equal symbol, type out the word average, open up a bracket, refer to your February column, and we are doing a uh, profit. So we are going to select your entire J column, deselect your title, and then close your bracket. And as you can see here, this is, hold on, I think I made a mistake. Uh, oh, uh, I think it's because I have a lot of zeros. Uh, let me see. Average J. Okay, let me try this again. Average close February. Yeah, I think it's because I have zero. So I'm just going to include the first three maybe and then close it. There, that makes a lot more sense. So I think because um, I'm doing the average, then um, it includes all of these empty ones as well. So you just have to do it at the end of the month, I guess, if you wanna include any data regarding your analytics. If you wanna add anything else, like calculate your average profit margin, average days to sell, etc., you can always create a new column and include that information as well. So I think that's all that I have to cover. Um, and I hope that helped in some way. Um, I made the previous one a long time ago, so I just want to include a few more um, tips and tricks on how to make your reselling spreadsheet easier. Um, it's really simple, and even if you're not tech savvy, it's really easy to do, and it's faster um, instead of doing everything by paper. So again, let me know in the comments below if you have any requests on how to calculate certain things and I'll maybe make some YouTube shorts on how to cover that stuff. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>